Hello there and welcome to this very amateur and very quick video um, all about this graph that you've got in front of you which is called a soil or a um, water budget graph. Um, now at first it looks really really complicated but do not despair it is actually pretty easy to work out what's going on. Um, as with any graph first thing that we do is we look at the title this one actually doesn't have one but it would say water budget. Um, you need to look at your axis so we've got our months running along the bottom okay and we've got two things going on we've got precipitation in millimeters okay but we've also got a line which denotes the amount of evapotranspiration so if you look very very carefully at the key you can see that our blue line represents the amount of precipitation and our red line represents the amount of evapotranspiration okay now obviously there are two key things that you need to be aware of firstly we are more likely to get rain in the winter months and we are more likely for it to be dry in the summer months okay now that's really really simple and really easy so if we look at the precipitation we can see that throughout the winter precipitation is higher Okay, in the summer, precipitation drops down because it's much, much drier. And then as we go back out into the winter, it starts to rise again. Okay, now obviously, evapotranspiration is going to be different in the winter to the summer. Obviously, the power of the sun is not that high and it's not that hot in the winter. So we've got low levels of evapotranspiration. But as we move through the summer months when the sun is nice and sunny and shiny and everyone's out getting their tans, um, we can see that evapotranspiration significantly increases. Okay, now obviously, both of these things will have a distinct distinct impact upon the amount of moisture that is in soil surrounding rivers. Okay, so if we have a look and we track it all the way back, let's say starting at February, okay? So we're in the middle of winter, it's rained lots and lots and lots and lots, so we end up with what we call a soil moisture surplus. So in other words, the soil moisture is really, really high, there's lots of water in the soil, and if it's a surplus, it means that there's too much, so we're likely to get lots of um, overland flow and possibly lots of flooding. As we move through the summer months though, okay, it starts to evaporate and as our levels of evapotranspiration start to increase, the amount of discharge or the amount of water in a river and the soil surrounding it actually starts to go down. Okay, So it says soil moisture utilisation. So in other words, what that means is that all the plants, all of the um, drainage systems are all using up the water that's in the moisture Okay, and some of it's being evaporated off into the atmosphere. However, we get to a point here where actually we run out of water in our soil, okay? And we end up with what we call a soil moisture deficit. So when we run out of water in our soil, okay, we're likely to get wilting because plants can't get enough moisture in order to be able to survive. That might be where we get hose pipe bands in the summer and you can't water your plants and things like that. But as we go through the winter months, the amount of evapotranspiration starts to fall off, our precipitation increases and we get soil moisture recharge. So in other words, it rains a lot more in the winter and we start to see the soil recharging itself with lots more moisture as it starts to rain and then the cycle continues, okay? So you can see how it changes. So it's really not as complicated as it looks.